Hi, I'm Chrissy. Welcome to Chrissy Crafts. Come see what's on my hook, what's in my hoop, and what's happening at home. So this week I have to start off with the pom-pom adventure. I've had a week full of pom-poms. Starting on Sunday, I met Emma Potter of Potter and Bloom at Ascot Racecourse. It was their family racing day and she was running a craft stall there making pom-poms and doing a little bit of crochet. And she asked me if I would join her and help her teach a gazillion children how to make pom-poms. Who am I to say no? So off I went and oh my gosh, what a silly day we had. We had three picnic tables full of yarn and pom-pom makers and literally a gazillion kids came around. They, we were positioned right by the face painting. And so of course, all the kids wanted their face painted. So while they were waiting in the queue for face painting, they had some craft tables set up run by some different people. And then Emma and I with the three tables with yarn and pom-pom makers. And it was such a hit. We were non-stop all day long from the moment I arrived till the moment we shut down everything. It was just kid after kid after kid sitting down. Can I make a pom pom? Can I make a pom pom? A couple of them would stay and make a bunch of them. One child, this young boy who was so funny, just proclaimed on his third pom pom, I am addicted. I found what I wanted to do with my life. I'm not kidding. He was fabulous. And I thought, go for it. That's my goal too. Oh, it was so funny. Um, the carnage of yarn everywhere afterwards. We started off all neat and happy little granny squares here and there and pretty baskets full of yarn and as the day went on and we just kept trimming pom-poms and cutting things I just looked about me and there was just scraps of yarn and balls of yarn unrolling and tangled up and it was mayhem. It was so funny and Emma and I just like would have the odd glance at each other and I'll chat with her next time we get together because we didn't get to chat at all. Her lovely husband, Darren, thank God, would save our lives because he could see when we were kind of going very pale and a bit shaky and would come around with like, you know, nuts and raisins for us <laughs> or the odd bit of fruit and cups of tea. Thank you, Darren. He liked to tell when the blood sugar was low, boosted us back up. So yeah, it was a glorious day. We have lots of children addicted to pom-pom making now. But it was followed up by Monday morning. My youngest daughter, Violet, was ill. She got the sick bug that's going around the school and she stayed home. And what did she say she wanted to do? Make pom-poms. Because I, I hadn't made enough the day before. I think I made a thousand pom-poms. So we made some pom-poms. This is one of the ones I made for the big rainbow pom-pom. And then she's back at school now and she's all fine. It was just like a one-off thing, but just kept her home. And what was on the radio this morning on Women's Hour on Radio 4, but how to make pom-poms. So everywhere. I'm very on trend, but it's also a bit spooky. I'm thinking they're kind of invading and taking over my life. I can't escape the pom-pom. So that was how I started off my week, but it was good fun. Now let's see what's on my hook. Next mandala is finished, the Chasing Rainbows mandala from issue 50, 55 of Simply Crochet. Chasing Rainbows mandala by Lucy Croft. Except for I did my version with the Nimolio linen thread and I did rainbow colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. I wasn't too sure about the white on the outside. I probably Doing it again, I probably would have kept it purple all the way around, but never mind. My youngest likes it and she's the rainbow queen, so I'm pleased with how that turned out. I might see if I could sneak it on my wall of yarn love, or she might just claim it straight away. So that was a fun one. The next one in the new issue, which I'll talk about in a moment, is called April Showers. Look at that one. That should be fun to do in greens and blues and whatnot. So I'll start getting the threads ready for that. What else is on my hook is further progress on the mist, well I call it the mist cupcake shawl, 
Miss Kingfisher. I'm getting to the final rows down here now. Love that big color block. Isn't that fun? So I've been working on that. I'm quite addicted to it. I just normally I work on something for a little while and then I stop for a little while, I get a bit bored, but even with it being double crochet back and forth, I just can't wait to get this one finished. So I've been kind of carrying it around everywhere with me in my little basket and hooking it whenever I can in between making pom-poms. All the details for everything will be in the show notes below. And I've started updating on my blog again. It's chrissycrafts.blogspot.com. And I just put show notes there and pictures and things like that. So that's restarted again. So you can find all the links there as well. I have something really special to share with you. I'm so excited about this last week. The new issue of Simply Crochet is out. And Be Kind With Your Crochet is by yours truly. I wrote an article for Simply Crochet. Oh, I was so excited. It's about Crochet Kind. The Crochet Kind hashtag. It is, well here, it'll tell you. Crocheting for a greater cause, crocheting for charity, crocheting for charitable organizations or any organization that needs crocheted and knitted items donated. I think it's an important thing to do. I really love volunteering. I really love crafting for charities. It just feels good to help out. And so it all started with Jenny's Blanket of Hugs and grew from there and now my crochet group we're going to do once a year at least we're going to have one of our crochet club meetings is going to be devoted to doing something for charity a couple months ago we crocheted granny squares for in an organization called blankets for the homeless this woman puts together donated granny squares and joins them all up and donates them to homeless people i wrote about it in the article so you can read more there one of the things that's come from this article in Simply Crochet is that one of Jenny's blanket of hugs, one of the seven, is being auctioned off by Simply Crochet. They are raising money for the Little Princess Trust. It's a charity that makes wigs for children who, are, or who have lost their hair due to cancer treatment or other illnesses. And it's close to my heart because a friend of mine, her daughter needed one of those wigs from Little Princess Trust a few years ago. And my daughter following that donated 10 inches of her own hair to the Little Princess Trust so that a wig could be made from her hair for a little girl. <sighs> Give me a minute. Really, what am I like? Sorry, I get all emotional. It's why I write about these things, because I'm not very good at talking about them. I get all one of those people who cries at adverts, so I can barely even talk about this. But what I'm getting at is this. Simply Crochet Magazine has set up a Just Giving page to raise money for the Little Princess Trust. They're raffling off the Jenny's Blanket of Hugs. You have a chance of winning it if you donate even the smallest amount from the Simply Crochet Just Giving page. The details are below in the show notes and they will be on my blog. And they're also available through the Simply Crochet website. Please help. It's such a good cause and it is such an amazing charity I've seen firsthand. Thank you. Okay, moving swiftly on to what's in my hoop. The tutorials have started I've put up separate, very brief YouTube videos to show how to do things like the Lazy Daisy Stitch, which is here, here, and here, French Knots, which is the center of that, and for the fennel. Also, I've included things like how to transfer a pattern to some fabric, how to prepare your thread for embroidery. I got a really good question on one of the videos, Anna Goya, or Goyea. I don't know how to pronounce her surname very well, but Anna, thank you for your question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. She had asked about how you 
knot your thread. Do you put a knot and have it on the back? Or what do you do when you're embroidering? And there are a couple different ways you can deal with that. And I'll show you how. The first is you can have a knot on the back of your thread and just come up through the front. The second is called a waist knot. A waist knot is meant to be cut away. And I will show you now how to do that. I'm going to show you how to make a waist knot. It is a knot you will cut away from your embroidery, leaving no knots on the back of your work. A waist knot is good when you're doing something that there is the possibility that somebody will see your backside, such as on a handkerchief or a tablecloth, or napkins, things like that. So you have your embroidery floss. I've made the little knot on the end, you see right there. Now a lot of times I'll just come up from the back of my work and pull through, like everybody does. I'm going to show you the waist knot on the stem for the lavender. What you do is go in from the front, a little ways away from where you're going to be stitching. And you pull the thread through, leaving your knot on the front of your work. Then you make two tiny stitches along the line of where you will be stitching so you could cover them up. So I come up and I go down just the tiniest stitch. These are anchoring stitches. They're going to keep the thread in place. Another stitch comes up right next to the first one, again along the line of where you're going to be stitching. If you look closely, you'll see two tiny stitches there. Now what you'll do is start stitching, which I'll do in the next video. I'm going to do a stem stitch right here. But first, I'm going to show you. Once you've made a number of stitches and you cover up those two anchoring stitches, then everything's secure on the back. So then you could just cut away that knot. I'm going to pretend I did all the stitches already and I cut away that knot. That way there is no knot on the back and the front of the knot has disappeared. It's called a waist knot and it magically disappears. So if there are any questions about the stitches or about the tutorials or if you have anything you'd like to see, please send me a message and let me know or comment below or comment on one of the tutorials. Um, next up will be stem stitch, chain stitch. Start doing all the stems of the flowers and things. So the Easter holidays are upon us next week. I know some of the schools in the UK are already on break, but my kids are still in school until Friday. So we shall see if I'm able to put another video up next week. It might be the week after, depending on how manic our time is here. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye. A swirly chair. Whee!